there are few men in scripture that God met unprepared most of the men that became mighty with God they were doing something they were consecrated to God at different levels Moses after he left Egypt had kept a dangerous consecration that's why he went to Horeb Petro is a descendant of Keturah is a descendant of the Midianite and the Midianite are the children of Keturah so he is of Abraham's blood and so they understand priesthood so Moses did not stumble on Horeb he knows that Horeb is the mountain of God because Jethro is a priest and Jethro must have told him on that mountain God meets men that's why Moses kept going there Samuel the Bible said when the Iwi lamp is put out first Samuel chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3 he kept sleeping on the altar he had a consecration he kept sleeping on altar they are not strangers there's something they know there's a life they live go and check the scripture you will find these things they are replete Joseph will tell Potiphar's wife Genesis 39 verse 9 when she told him to sleep with her he said how can I do this evil and sin against God my master has not kept anything from me except you how can I do this evil so there was a consecrated life our generation is porous people don't stand for anything they just float as their emotions lead them and they are wondering why God is not using them and why they are not becoming mighty go and find out the consecrations that they happily they skip you'll be shocked that we are joking as Christians I've never seen any worldly herbalist I've never seen any secular native doctor they are too consecrated in fact sometimes civilization is a distraction to them that's why they are in the forest there's no law that they must stay in the forest but they don't want to desecrate the ambience of the spirit that they worship that's the level of consecration but today bishops are secular bishops are worldly and we are talking about bringing light to affect our generation now 90% of viewers watching this video will agree with me that Apostle Michael Oropo is an unusual kind of preacher. He is not your regular kind of preacher and mind you, I am not PRD analysis. I am a full-time minister of God so in this video, I will tell you nothing but the bitter truth. Apostle Michael Oropo happens to be a preacher I respect so much but I won't go easy on him in this video. Even if I am higher than he is in the knowledge of the word of God, he has proven to be higher in revelation than many world famous pastors claiming to be general overseers today. Now, I am doing this video based on my YouTube community request. Majority wanted me to talk about Apostle Michael Rockwell and I had to come through with this video. So in this video, we will be looking at number one, who is Apostle Michael Rockwell? Number two, what kind of gospel does he preach? And have there been any false teaching so far? Number three, why I respect Apostle Michael Rockwell? Number four, the gray areas of his ministry and finally, number five, should a true Christian who wants to make rapture, who wants to make heaven, listen to Apostle Michael Rockwell. So quickly before we begin, please go below this video and click on the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that YouTube can notify you first whenever I make a new video. Now, Apostle Michael Ape Oropo was born on the 1st of March 1981. He hails from Otupa in Idomaland, Benue State where he spent most of his childhood. He holds a bachelor degree in pure chemistry and a master's degree in physical chemistry. According to the reports online, he has been having encounters since he was a child. And later in the future, he had encounters, physical encounters, with the likes of Benehin, the likes of Reinhard Bonke, uh, Bishop Oyedepo, Chris Oyakilome, David Abioye, and he is said to be the direct spiritual son of Apostle Arome Osai. Apostle Michael Oropo was ordained into ministry on the 24th of March 2019. He is the founder of Encounter Jesus Ministries International. He is a teacher and evangelist by gift and his net worth is estimated at $150,000. He is married to Pastor Osenaga Michael Oropo and he has a son named Moses Idango Ehinomen Oropo. Now, I've listened to Apostle Michael Oropo and I've watched some of his teachings and I must confess that I was blessed by the few that I watched. Sincerely, I was. From what I watched so far, I can confidently say that he teaches the message of revival and consecration. Consecration especially, just like uh, Romeo Sai. And of all the preachers out there today, I can say Michael Oropo has proven to be better in Revelation than many. I would still prefer Michael Oropo's teaching 
to that of uh, Joshua Seman, Chris Oya Kilome, and many other worldly pastors claiming to be teachers today. I was amazed at uh, Michael Ropo's insights about the pre-Adamic age, his insights about heaven, his insights about consecration, and some other things. You know that no ordinary preacher can just come across things like that. Now, you can't compare congregations of people listening to Michael Ropo to those listening to Selman and the rest. And so far, so good, I have not been able to lay hands on a major false teaching by Apostle Michael Rocco. I'm not saying he can't make mistakes or he's perfect, but for now, he's still trying in his level compared to others who preach false teaching with so much confidence. But I'm scared for Michael Rocco, the same reason I was scared for Arome Osai. And I fear for them because of the company that they keep and the way they mingle. They preach as if God sent them to save the whole world. And you and I know that that's not possible. So my prayer for him is that God will open his eyes before it's too late. Alright, why do I respect Apostle Michael Ropo? Hmm. Have you heard Apostle Michael Ropo's teaching on Godhead? I think the man has the best revelation on the Godhead among popular preachers today. The Bible says that it takes a man with the Holy Ghost to admit that Jesus is the Lord God Almighty. So I've had some good teachings from Apostle Michael Rocco and I wanted to hear what he thinks about the Godhead and Trinity. And when I heard him speak about the Godhead, preaching that Jesus is God who manifested in three offices and not three gods like many of them are preaching, I respected him instantly. I've heard his teachings on consecration, it affected me positively and I want to play a video now that made me respect him even more. So watch and when we get back, I talk about it. I was speaking about the reality show called Big Brother Niger the other time. I'm not against reality TV. There are many noble reality TVs where they task human intellect, they task human endurance. They hunt things, they search things, you see endurance, they leave them signs where they, they think creatively and tactically. They explore their energy to find out the win task, you know, and they win the, the profit. I'm not against reality show. But when you begin to legalize pornography, then there is a problem. And then you find gullible Christians for three months. Big Brother Niger is playing non-stop. Then they come, they are saying, how can a married woman sleep with somebody? That means we have deteriorated to a level where it wouldn't have been a problem if she was not a married woman. I looked, they were complaining that that lady, she's married, she came and slept with somebody. So if she were not married, it wouldn't have been a problem. To let you know the level of decadence once upon a time in this same society when you are dressed carelessly people abhor you now people can kiss on reality show it's normal single people can have open intimacy on reality tv it's normal it's only married people we are offended with and because that dress should have been crossed the next edition is two two married women that will sleep and it will no longer be a problem don't know that we are graduating in iniquity and then the younger and innocent generation who don't know what is going on nine years old eight years old seven years old they cross their leg and they are watching what on and then we mentor them and train them in the path of iniquity and you think such men can have spiritual stamina that's why we are good movie watchers we are good football analysts we are good club dancers, but when we come to ascend in the spirit, they, they, many can't even ascend above the ceiling of the building where they are in. When you say, let's pray, shaba, 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 shaba. they now sit down, put their hand on their face, and they are doing like this. You think they are in the spirit. When you come close, you discover the person is snoring in prayer meeting. Because the love of many will what? Wax cold. Every ministry has a gray area, is what I've come to realize over time. Now, there are some gray areas that you will see and you will just ignore because they don't really matter very much. Then there are some gray areas that when you see them, you just write off that preacher as either Ichabod or Serpent Seed. Also, there are some gray areas that signifies a warning that this preacher may not end well. And if the preacher won't end well, same goes for his followers. Now, Apostle Michael Ropo preaches consecration. We all know that. Consecration is practical holiness. But when I took a closer look at his family, at his wife, who is a mirror of what he preaches, the attachment was mighty and terrible. Fake hairdo, 
showing skin in one wedding picture i saw which you can see on the screen now in a way a minister's wife shouldn't show the other time i was talking about aroma Elsa, you also saw aroma Elsa, his wife putting on trousers you saw the way she also dresses too it was not even looking like a holiness picture that's why some people respect kumuyi because even if kumuyi we know kumuyi too that kumuyi is a false preacher but when kumuyi is preaching holiness you can see the holiness reflecting on his people even if it's not true holiness at least he was able to paint a picture that you can know that okay you can't fire kumuyi on holiness much because you see his people looking holy no earrings you see them cover themselves properly you see the sisters on natural hair i don't know if you understand what i mean now you who claim to be a pastor and you are advising people to be separate because if you listen to um, apostle michael Oropo, you see that he's always talking about separation consecration sertification i don't know if you understand you that is preaching such you're advising people not to be worldly it should start from you it should start from your wife you know we that understand higher revelation in the end time message we know that a preacher's sermon is reflected on the wife when a preacher wants to pick a wife the wife a preacher picks is the reflection of who the preacher is when adam saw eve adam said now this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh he was able to accept her so whosoever a preacher picks as wife it reveals who that preacher is then the way your wife dresses the way your wife appears it shows the gospel you are preaching if the gospel cannot start from your house then what you can impact the life of the people i don't know if you are understanding now one more gray area that gives me concern i stumbled on a video where apostle michael Ropo was endorsing uh adeboye and oyedebo I was talking about them and i was dumbfounded at what i had you may watch the video and not understand but when we get back i will explain let's a go a friend of mine went to bishop david Oedebo. in fact i was the one who made the connection for him he went and saw god's servant and god's servant just laid hands on him go and prosper as he left there in four hours he got 15 million i'm not saying one month four hours people just woke up from different places and started sending money to him in four hours 15 million this is somebody who has not seen four million in a long time 15 million because a giant spoke and they wait his words command they are heavy somebody came to pastor here they boy i'm saying sir Business is not working. I'm struggling. Oh, oh. And Pastor Adebo looked at him and said, Well, go now. Your doors are open. No prayer. Go now. Your doors are open. And the person went out. And his friend told him to follow him to see somebody. When they went, he now realized he knew the person. And the man said, Well, how, how are you doing? We we're talking and we stopped talking. He said he lost his number. And he said you should see him next week. The guy came back and the man told him, What do you do? He said, I'm into properties. Really? I have some properties here. I want to sell them. Properties worth billions. The man told him, if you can sell it for 200 million or so, that's fine. This property is worth over 3 billion. 200 and something is sell, sell. He thought it was a joke. He came back the next day. They gave him the whole papers. Say, go with them. Go with any time you sell. Bring it. Ah! He now went to Daddy Adeboy to testify. He now said, it's just two weeks, so see what God has done. And that devil will just smile and say, give one of the house as light to ensure you. The man said, ah, give one of the house. Ah, ah, why? I've not even sold it. Ah, that devil will say, oh, sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry. You can go. <laughs> the guy left. When he saw the man in two days time, the man called him and said, how did you come to take papers from my house? <laughs> he said, ah, you gave me the papers and told me to sell it for 200. What? Whatever you used on me, if you don't return those papers in 24 hours, you'll be arrested. I'm not telling you, this is not day, very day. If you don't return those papers, you, you will be arrested. What did you use on me? What? <laughs> now, I know Adeboye to be a false preacher, a wolf in the most convincing sheep clothing. A man who is in the forefront of uniting religions in Africa cannot be a true man of God. Now, three things a preacher ought to be careful of fame, women, and money. 
How can a true man of God refer someone to a deboy? To hell with the honor and general church acceptance one will receive from associating with a deboy. God's church is not of the majority. God's church is set apart. Now, the sermon you had Michael Rocco preach in that video you just watched is idolizing a deboy and a debo. And when a preacher preaching truth begins to endorse false preachers, that preacher will go off track in no distant time. This is the bitter truth. Was this not how Joshua Selman started? When Joshua Selman started, everybody was believing him. Even end time message Christians were listening to uh, Joshua Selman until he publicly displayed his evil association with preachers who have made secret covenant with Satan. No matter how good an egg is, once it enters the garden of bad eggs, that good egg goes bad. Now, everyone will not understand what I'm saying here. You may come to the comment section to come and attack me as usual, but he that had ear, let him hear. It's one thing for a preacher to preach well. It's another thing for a preacher to end well. And any preacher you follow, their destination will be your destination. That's why I advise Christians to follow preachers who preach what Paul preached and not what preachers of today are preaching. Some preachers will say God called them, rather than visiting the Bible to see how the apostles preached, how the apostles gave their life. One day I was reading the scriptures. I was reading when Paul was narrating what he went through, shipwreck, floggings, uh, drowning in the sea, all manner of things. Yet, he preached the gospel, he preached the truth, Peter truth. But today, rather than people to visit the scriptures and see how the apostles preached, they want to look at how successful preachers pre are preaching and follow the footprints of successful preachers. That's not how it ought to be. Now, if you remember the video I did about um, Arome Osai, there are some things I said. And if you listen to Michael Rockwell, some of his teachings are good, but those who have tasted higher revelation or the capstone message, like myself, cannot listen to Michael Rockwell because there are levels to the heavenly harvest. According to Matthew chapter 13, verse 8 and 23, Mark chapter 4, verse 20, there is 30 fold, there is 60 fold, and there is 100 fold. Now, these three groups are categories of Christians who will make heaven. I'm not talking about the ones who will go to hell. Anyone who is going to hell is not of God. God didn't know them, no predestination for them. Some of them are in the churches today clapping and singing. Some of them are even your gospel musicians. But hell is their destination. There's no amount of preaching you want to preach to those people. They will go to hell because the seed to make heaven is not in them. That's a sermon for another day. Today we are talking about Michael Rockwell. And there are some teachings I can't bring on YouTube. I have to be telling you small, small. Now, 30 fold are the foolish virgins who will be on earth to witness the great tribulation. And some of them will die before making heaven. 60 fold are wise virgins who are going to be invitees of the bride. Then, 100 fold are the group of the man child who are the very bride, the sons of God, who will be caught up to the size of the north. I know it may sound strange to some of you, but these are scriptural facts. These are mysteries, and I can't tell you everything on YouTube. Even Jesus didn't do that. When he was with the, with the crowd, he spoke in parables. When he was with the real people, he told them everything, the integrity of it all. Now, only those who have chatted with me privately will fully understand what I'm saying here. So, you can listen to Michael Rockwell, but his message will only leave you on earth while others are going for rapture. I can't call him a false preacher yet because I believe that some of these preachers will repent later on when they realize that the small boys like us were saying the truth. That time, this my YouTube channel will be flooding with viewers, flooding with subscribers. That's when many of you will take me serious. And watch out. Every preacher I have called false on YouTube, many people have started calling them false now. Many bloggers are calling them false. Are you seeing it? And preachers I approve of. Bloggers are approving of them. Have you asked yourself why? And I'm not a popular person. I'm just a small boy who came out of nowhere. Time will come when I will tell you guys my story. But my prayer for Apostle Michael Oropo is that God should help him. Him and Arome Osai. I love these two preachers so much. My prayer for them is that God should also open their eyes so that they can come out of all these bad associations of false preachers before they end up in the spider's web. So that's all for now anyway. On your screen now, you will see videos I did about Apostle Arome Osai in case you have not watched them. The, the one I did of David Oyedepo, Joshua Seman. And I also put a playlist on the screen now showing videos that I've done exposing false preachers in case you want to take your time and watch them. So till I come your way again, I remain Brother Ruben Micah. I love you and God bless you.